Rob, welcome to Axel's Garage. Today we're out here doing a brake job. We got our 2003 Suburban. It's our tow vehicle, it's our workhorse, and it's been my wife's daily driver for a few months now, which means that the brakes are shot. Anyway, it's got original stock rotors on it, which are probably shot as well. We're going to pull the wheel off, we're going to take a look, but we're going to be installing the Power Stop Severe Duty Truck and Towing Brake Set for the front. It's got rotors, pads. We did an unboxing review, and I'll put a link to that right up here. And you can look at that unboxing. Nice quality project. We're going to show you how to get it installed. Doesn't take too long. Um, you got to take those caliper brackets off, so it's a little bit of a pain. But either way, we'll put the brakes in. We'll show you how to do it step by step, and we'll show you the very important braking procedure. All right, so after getting the, the wheel off, car up on stands, the first step is to get this caliper off. So you got your two caliper bolts, one up top, one up the bottom. Just bang them off. That'll work. All right, so the caliper bolt is not the standard old school GM disc brake bolt. It's a T55 Torx. and it's in there real tight. All right, there's no reason for them to be in that tight. The last, uh, last brake job on this vehicle was done on the road while we were on vacation and we got it done in a firestone. Alright, so we get your two caliper bolts out, uh, a little screwdriver or something, you should be able to pry that caliper right out of the bracket there. It'll come out over the ridge. You see how far out those pistons are. Alright, <clears throat> my wife uh, said the brakes are starting to make noise. All right, so you see how grooved they are. There's a good eighth of an inch lip on the inside of the rotor. I'm sure that back side's gonna look pretty shitty too. All right, so brake pads. All right, we'll come out of these brackets. You just gotta jiggle them back and forth. Sometimes use a screwdriver to get them out. You can see these brakes are pretty baked. They're cracked um, and they're worn. This one is still got material on it, but it's thin. But it really wore the rotor out more than Obviously it wore the pad stuck out. on the sliders, but you can see that back pad's looking real good, huh? That's metal to metal, so I'm sure that rotor is going to look like shit when we take it off. Hold on to this one because we're going to put it right here like it was in the back so that we can push those pistons back into the caliper once we get everything apart. So on the back side of the caliper bracket, you got two 18 millimeter headed bolts. They're in with Loctite, so they're usually real tight, so get an 18 millimeter socket on a long extension, um, a long uh, breaker bar, and you got to break that that uh, Loctite seal. Once you break that Loctite seal, if you put a an impact lightly on it, on a swivel, sometimes you can get back there with an impact. If you're working on a lift, I'm sure you get back there with a straight impact, but... you break them loose like that, they, they do come out and they do have the yellow Loctite on them. Alright, you get your two bolts out. They're both the same, so you don't have to worry about mixing them up. The caliper bracket comes off, and there's your caliper bracket. It's got the original sliders on them. You could, a lot of people like to reuse the original sliders because they claim the GM sliders are better than the aftermarket ones, I'm a firm believer of that as well. So what I usually do is just take a wire brush, brush off those sliders and re-lube them up and I use the original ones. Um, I haven't had luck with the ones that come with the brake pads. They always seem to, to get stuck. All right, but with that off, now you can take your rotor off and you can see how grooved the back side of the rotor is, being metal to metal, and you can see that ridge 
on the front side of the rotor here and how thin the inside rotor surface is. If you look at that, it's pretty thin, so it's time for these to go as well. These were original to the car, as far as we know. So now that everything's apart, you got to push your pistons back into your, to your caliper, and the best way to do that is to take the cap off your master and do it very slowly with either a C-clamp or a tool designed for that function. We're gonna, we don't have the tool, so we're going to use the C-clamp and the old brake pad, and let me take that cap off, and then I'll show you how to get it back in. All right, so I took the cap off the master cylinder. Um, when you do that, just be careful that you don't, um, when, you, when you squeeze this back in, you don't do it too fast because then you'll spray fluid all over the place. But you take the cap off the master, um, you got your brake pad right on it, and you come in with your C-clamp. Try to get right in the middle of the two pistons so that you're squeezing them at the same time. And then just very slowly tighten that C-clamp up and the pistons will go in. Just do it nice and slow. So you don't make a mess up in your engine compartment. Okay, using a, a combination wrench on the C-clamp makes it a little bit easier on your hands. When you get them all the way in, make sure that that C-clamp stays right in the middle so you're not cocking either one of those pistons as you go in. But once you get them all the way in, um, then you can loosen up your C-clamp and discard your old brake pad. Alright, so with your pistons back in your caliper, with your caliper bracket off, now you can go prepare your new stuff. What you're going to do is you're going to take this caliper bracket, you're going to pop the sliders off. You're going to pop the two sliders off and clean them. Uh, or you're going to replace them with the new sliders that come in your brake kit. You're going to take your two caliper bolts and you're going to clean those threads off because you need clean threads to reinstall them and put the uh, Loctite back on them so that when they go in there they don't rattle loose. Okay, so we got our caliper bracket sliders cleaned up. Just used a, a little wire brush, wire, you know, wire toothbrush, and got them nice and clean. They're smooth and I you know, rotted or, or have divots in them or anything like that. If, if they were damaged, we would replace them. We used the same wire toothbrush to clean the threads on our caliper bolts. And we got our rotor here. So we got to put the rotor on first. And they say that you should make sure that this surface here on your hub is free of rust and grime. Um, hit it with a wire brush if it's not this hub has been replaced not too long ago So we don't have any rust build up there But what I will do is I'll just put a, a little dab of white grease to prevent some rust in the future So I cleaned off any schmutz with my rag there and then I'll just Put a little dab of white grease Smooth it out with my finger so that this doesn't rust up on there you want this to be a nice smooth surface so that the rotor sits nice. Right now in this power stop kit, these rotors are directional and they do have a little sticker on them that they say driver side and passenger side. Alright, this one says front passenger side. Um, you want the the grooves and the cross drills are on an angle, you want the angle towards the back, like that, just the way it is. Um, the easiest way here is to take one of your lug nuts, put it on backwards, and just spin it on to hold the rotor in place while you're installing the caliper bracket. This way your rotor doesn't flop around on you while you're putting your bracket in. Now you have your caliper bracket, you're going to want to just lay it there for now. You take your two bolts that you cleaned up and a little Loctite. All right, like two drops of Loctite is all you need. Start one bolt 
then slot your second bolt in. Okay, you're going to spin these all the way in and then you're going to tighten them up. You're going to make them pretty tight. I usually take the breaker bar and I give it a little ump with the breaker bar and that's usually tight enough. Alright, now your caliper rackets are on good, you can move on to your pads. For the pads, I like to spray a little anti-squeal on the back side of the pad, so I did that earlier so that it would dry and set up. And you put your pads in your brackets prior to uh, putting the caliper on. In this situation here, you can use some some brake caliper grease that's designed for it, or you could use white grease. I like to use the white grease, and I like to take some white grease and put it right on my sliders so that those brake pads will slide nice in the future. Alright, so you're going to take one pad, you're going to put it on the inside. Alright, once you have your two pads in place, sometimes it takes a little tapping, like you saw with the edge of the uh, ratchet handle or something. You can take your caliper, make sure your brake hose isn't twisted, and you can slide your caliper right back in place. Alright, with your caliper in place, you can put your caliper bolts back in. You can lube them with the supplied caliper grease that comes in the kit. My personal preference, although, is the good old white lithium grease. Alright, put a little bit on the threads, cover that bolt, like that. And I slide one in and just get it started. Remember to get a little lube on the threads, right? Just a little bit of white grease on the threads to make it easier for the next guy. Because that next guy, you know it, might be you. And you're going to take your T55 torque socket. Same thing when you're doing these caliper bolts. You know, seat one, seat the other. Tighten one, tighten the other. Remember, when you're tightening the caliper bolts, you don't have to kill it. Just make sure they're good and tight. That's all. Don't go crazy. Make it easier for the next guy. Okay, so with this all done, you can take your lug nut off. That's holding the rotor in place because now the rotor is being held in place by the pads. I like to put just a little bit of white grease right around here where the rim meets the rotor on the hub. All right, and the purpose for that is just uh, so that those aluminum wheels don't stick and oxidize against the steel rotor and the steel hub. And now you can put your wheel on and do the same exact thing on the other side, and then we'll go over the brake. All right, well, after getting the other side in, truck back down on the ground, make sure your reservoir is topped off, get that cap back on it, because remember, we loosened it up when we were pushing the pistons back into the calipers. You are all set to go for the break-in. Now, the break-in procedure, they claim the power stop is very important. Um, I've seen some reviews where people didn't do the break-in and didn't really care for the brakes too much. So here's where we're going to go. The break-in, right off their website, five moderate to aggressive stops, from 40 miles an hour down to 10 miles an hour in rapid succession without letting the brakes cool. Right? And then you got to do five moderate stops from 35 down to 5 in rapid succession without letting the brakes cool. And then after that, 
drive for five or ten minutes without applying too much brake or stopping and standing on the brakes so that you can let everything cool down and your braking procedure is done. We did this braking procedure on our Yukon when we put the regular endurance pads and slotted cross rotors on the Yukon and it was easy, worked out no problem, so now we're going to do it with the Suburban. These are the Severe Duty Truck and Tow Brake Pads from Power Stop. We really like the products. These were about $175, Amazon Prime, shipped to my door, got it the next day. Uh, a great product as far as I'm concerned. We really like the Power Stop line. We're going to keep using them. Hopefully we don't have any issues. There are some bad reviews online, but so far everything we've done here at Axles, thumbs up for the uh, Amazon, or uh, Amazon, we don't want Amazon, but thumbs up for the Power Stop brake products. So far we really like them. Hopefully, we'll see. My wife won't be able to completely destroy these brakes because now we got severe duty truck and towing brakes. So we'll see what my wife can do to these. But that's all we got today from Axel's Garage. If you like the video, please give us that thumbs up. And if you like what we're doing here at Axel's Garage, as always, subscribe to our channel because once we hit a thousand, big news coming here at Axel's Garage. Big news. So hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.